describe for our audience how it happens that not only here in the Congress now, but in state after state, the needs of working people are ignored, the needs of the wealthy and powerful are addressed. Uh, well, first of all, I think it's important to say that it's not a partisan issue. As you said, a majority of both Republicans and Democrats support a higher minimum wage, support a right to paid sick leave, think that Citizens United should be overturned, and a bunch of other things. And the corporate lobbies are not cheerleaders for the Republican Party. They want more money and power for themselves, and they're not hesitant about going after pro-working people Republicans. In Michigan, when Right to Work, which is a law that's designed to kill unions in the private sector, was passed, the Senate Majority Leader, who was a Republican, was opposed to it. And he was taken in a back room with big money donors who essentially said, do what we say or this will be your last term in office because we'll pull our money from you and we'll fund a primary opponent. I think we just saw that in the Congress with the tax cut. Mm -hmm. Nobody was for the tax cut. Trump voters were not for the tax cut. <laughs> The Republicans said, we're told by our donors, this is the one make or break thing we have to do or we won't be back here because they'll fund an opponent to they us. They said in the it primary. openly. And that wasn't the end. I mean, think about that. They actually openly got quoted saying, we have to deliver on tax cuts for the donors or they won't be back again. You know, we need to call this out for what it is. It is corruption, plain and simple. <laughs> What I find so powerful about your point is that this is an organized effort just simply to take over our government, take over our government at the federal level, take over our government at the state level, and make the government work better and better for a thinner and thinner rich slice in America. And it's, it's the campaign contributions. We talk about those. But it's so much more than that. It's the fact that they can hire armies of lobbyists. You know, I, I still remember back following the financial crash when you would have expected that the banks, having just gotten bailed out by the American taxpayers, would just be a little bit mm -hmm. chagrin, right. just a little embarrassed to show up in the halls. No. <laughs> they spent a million dollars a day lobbying against basic financial reforms, lobbying against the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And I, I still remember, because this is when I was, I was still a teacher, I come down to Washington to try to fight for the consumer agency, and literally, the, the lobbyists would come by in such big herds of, of people in hand-tailored suits and you know handmade loafers that you kind of had to lean back against the hallway and let it down the hallway. It, it matters there, that, that there is this huge lobbying apparatus on the side of corporations, on the side of money, on the side of giant banks. Who's there for the folks who get cheated? 